Welcome to another installment of WGS TV, YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer and ZFX TV. I'm Double B Billy Boudreau. We're going to talk about Friday Night Smackdown review for the week of July 13, 2012. Now, on this particular Smackdown, Zack Ryder, you know, Long Island IZ, is the general manager for this episode. And, you know, he was calling it Zack Down, and you would think with one of the final down leading up until Money in the Bank that we would have like a, a pretty good program not the case because I, i'm going to tell you this right now guys this was a less than stellar edition of friday night smackdown what do i mean when i say that well let, let's take a look at what happened on this week's episode we open up with an, a, a decent match with Alberto Del Rio and Sin Cara. You know, we were promised a match a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw between these two, and all we got was a beatdown. So, for the fact that, fact of the matter is that we're able to get an actual match between these two is a bit of a thumbs up. And I, I'm very impressed. With it. Uh, I thought it was a, a good build and a good opening match for SmackDown, and... You know, with Del Rio being pushed for the number one contender, I kind of figured that he'd be the one to go over on Sin Cara, but it was still a really good match. A really good match. So I'm, I'm going to go 3.5 out of 5. Next up, we, apparently now we're having a feud develop between Primo, Epico, and Rosa Mendez. Arriba. I mean, I love seeing Rosa Mendez. Does my loneliness seep through my commentary? Anyway. And, and as and uh, the primetime players with All World Productions with uh with uh, AW so so we had a match with Primo and Darren Young. Do a lot of people really care that there is a feud going on between Primo Epico and the primetime players? Probably not. Probably not. But you gotta admire WWE's attempt to put some focus on the tag team divisions and that's what they're trying to do with this feud with Primo, Epico, and the primetime players. Primo gets the win over Darren Young. I'm going to go three out of five on the match. Just, you know, I would have gone for a lower score, but the fact of the matter is we saw Rosa Mendez and Rosa swivels her hips and she dances and I love it. Three out of five. Next up, we have a uh, tag team match to build into the Money in the Bank ladder match for the World Heavyweight title. It's uh, Dolph Ziggler and Cody Rose taking on Santino Morella and Christian. Now, this is a main, this got main event written all over it, but even though they put it at like towards the end of the first hour, it's, this is still a really good match. Um, I thought it was a great build, great, great build into the Money in the Bank World Heavyweight title match. Uh, Vicky Guerrero got just a ton of heat. I mean, a ton of heat from the crowd just for her introing Dolph Ziggler. And, you know, that proves why Vicky Guerrero is such an asset for a a young heel wrestler. You know, if they don't have that, op that, that ability to draw heat for themselves or speak for themselves, you know, they can put Vicky Guerrero as their manager and she could just draw heat like crazy. And that's one of the reasons why she's a good heel manager is Vicky. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the... T as far as this tag match goes, Ziggler got the win with the zigzag. And, you know, that kind of gives you the, the feeling that p quite possibly we might be looking at Ziggler uh, coming away with money in the bank. I would not be I wouldn't be shocked if Ziggler came away with it because a lot of people feel that it's his offense. It, it's it's Ziggler's time to shine, you know, win the money in the bank and whatnot. And I would not be surprised if WWE, WWE actually went with it, if they actually went with, uh, you know, and pushed Ziggler for the uh, money in the bank and the World Heavyweight title. The tag match, I'm going to go four out of five. Next up, Big Show and the Great Khali. 30-second match, just. Why? Two out of five. That's all I'm going to say. Next up, we have Ryback and Tyler Rex. Now, Ryback show me some, showed me something in this match. You know, we, we've seen him, you know, execute bumps, you know, in, in his moves, but we've never seen him take a bump. 
And we actually saw uh, that in this match. Ryback's ability to take some bumps, take some spots from the other wrestlers. Because normally we see him squash no-name talents. And with Tyler Rex, uh, you know, we saw something different. You know, even though, yeah, it was a jobber match, you know, it, it wasn't a complete domination. You know, Ryback didn't completely dominate Tyler Rex as he would some of his other opponents. You know, and we got the, the chance to see how Tyler Rex can actually handle taking some bumps I'm sorry Ryback can actually handle taking some bumps and I, I must say I was impressed with his work you know not only can he execute the moves he can actually take the moves as well and that's important that's important because you cannot you know you cannot succeed on being just a pure dominant 100% wrestler you know you have to have that ability to take bumps as well as execute them and you know right back for the past few months we've seen him nothing do nothing but execute the moves we've never seen him take the moves before until tonight and right back I believe did a really good job of it did a really good job of it and did what was he was supposed to and I must say very impressed and I'm gonna up the score for usually for a right back match, I usually give it a one or a two, but you know, ju just giving the op having the opportunity to see what kind, uh, you know, how he takes bumps, you know, for the very first time, I must say I was impressed with the way he did it. Th well, I'm going to go 3.5 out of five, and you know, with with him st stepping up, you know, going against more established names or jobbers rather, like. Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins. I believe it's only a matter of time before we st um, see WWE actually push him for a storyline and actually give us a little bit of a, a definitive background and to the Ryback gimmick. I mean, they're doing a, a, a really, a, really, they're doing an okay job with Brodus Clay. I know probably there are a lot of you guys out there who would disagree with me on that statement, but then again, this is my video, my opinions. Um, but I believe it's only a matter of time before we see Ryback start to main event in the WWE. He's on the verge. He's on the verge. I'm glad WWE stopped doing the repetitive no-name uh, jobbers just coming out and getting squashed by Ryback. And we're getting, we're getting a chance to see him with more established names in the WWE and see what kind of wrestler he really is. What kind of performer he really is. So, one thing I'm looking forward to, though, is when are they going to have him do a mic promo? When are we going to hear Ryan Back actually talk? And um, we see, we've we heard him talk as, you know, the corn-fed meathead Skip Sheffield, but that's this is a totally different gimmick than the Ryan Back gimmick, so... I just wanted to give my little opinion on that. And then finally, main event, which should be a main event on any pay-per-view. Sheamus and Chris Jericho. You want to talk about really, really great match. Um, uh, both Jericho and Sheamus, really awesome. I, I love the match. It was a great match. And the fact is, they, they, di they did a great job for the last build towards Money in the Bank for Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio. They had Del Rio. It looked like he was coming out in the car, which I believe was a Lamborghini, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but then again, I'm not a, I'm not exactly a car guy, to be honest with you guys. But it, it, it was he came out, and then we thought he was in the car, and then Del Rio sneak attacks Sheamus. And next thing we know, uh, Sheamus is... I'm sorry, Alberto Del Rio is putting the cross arm breaker across the stage... You know, the edge of the stage on Sheamus. So, I, I gotta say, I saw the match at the Cajun Dome a couple of weeks ago. And I was very impressed. And I, I really look forward to what these guys have to present for their pay-per-view match at Money in the Bank. So, the main event for Sheamus and Chris Jericho, I'm going to go 4 out of 5. Um, my overall score for Friday Night Smackdown this week, I'm going to go 3 out of 5. It was basically an average program at best. He figured WWE would, would have done a little bit better of a job with you know with just a couple of or with just a day or so until Money in the Bank, but it's WWE. Go figure. So my overall score, a 3 out of 5. You know, not a stellar program, average at best.
So what I want to know from you guys, the viewers and subscribers out there, your thoughts on Friday Night Smackdown this week. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Don't forget to subscribe to both YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer and YouTube.com slash ZFX TV Network and YouTube.com slash ZFX Fame. Remember those three? Remember those three, guys. So with that being said, I'm Double B Billy Boudreaux saying thank you very much for watching.